Yes, they're ready? They are ready. We're going to give the youth, the friends of our belated brother, a chance to show their attribution. Thank you very much, worship team. staying in this house. The house is called Strubens. Why don't you fellowship together? Why don't you like fellowship together? So he, he heard the voice of God and he answered that call. He answered what God had told him and then he started Strubens Fellowship. So so that's how Strubens Fellowship started. It's uh, Kudzu who initiated it. That's why um, I think if you check in the row after the praise and worship, uh, those are some of the people we fellowship with. And uh, also, I'd like to introduce um, SCF. This is a Christian, uh, student Christian fellowship at the University of Cape Town, where Kudzi was. And uh, some of the representatives of um, SCF, I, I think it's people to my left, the last row, if you can just stand up, uh, people acknowledge that you are here. Yes. Uh, and also in our midst, we have Kudzi's parents and uh, his brother Alan. They are sitting right in front of us. Uh, I won't bother them to stand up, uh, but we'd like to appreciate you. Uh, we'd like to thank you for being with us. And so we have so many people here who fellowship with Kudzi in so many different ways. Uh, some, of the, some of them you didn't have to get into an atmosphere where we say now we are praying or now we are speaking about the word of God. That's all he knew, that's all he was. Hence we are celebrating him today because we know where he is. And you know, I've heard so many times when people say we know where he is, you know, and I've always wondered, how do you know? Are you sure he's there? But I can attest that I knew him personally, you know. Me, you, you see me in front of here talking to you. I was one of the most timid people that you could ever, you could ever meet, you could ever think of. But because of Strubert's fellowship, which was started by Kuzi, I learned the word, I learned how to be bold. You know, even coming, even coming to church, physically coming to church, for the first time, I remember he came and then he said, ah, "So we are supposed to join. Um, we're supposed to join like somewhere where you serve the Lord." In my head, I was like, "I thought we were just coming to church. What is this serving that you are talking about?" You know. And his head kept ringing in my head until I said, "You know what? Kuzi has been my leader before, and he has led me in the right path before." I might just take this initiative. That's how I got to stand here. That's how I'm speaking to you. And that's how I'm able to testify and fully know that I know where Kuzi is. To me, he was not just, he was beyond a brother. I don't know how to describe what he was to me. In many instances, he was a leader to me. In many instances, he was a teacher to me. <laughs> In many instances, when I myself couldn't hear the voice of God, he's the one who would come with the message to me, that start, this is what the Lord of God, what is this what God is telling you to do? And every time I listened to him, and everything that I did, he was always right, because he's one person who was in the same frequency with God. He flowed at the same vibrations with God. 
and I don't have, in, there's nothing in me that I have that is enough to thank him for the things that he has done for me, you know? It's just sad to realize that now, the sad part about this is knowing that I don't have that physical ability to thank him and appreciate him for the things that he has been doing. But I really want to thank him. And I, oh, I, I keep saying this. For those who go to Strubert's, to the Strubert's house, just casually to go there, the first sound that you'll be introduced to is a man praying. And that man was Kuzi. When I say he fully devoted his life to Christ, he was not living for money. He was not graduating so that he becomes the next best person. He was doing it for Christ. Every word that came out of his mouth, everything that he said, I was to remember, I was so inspired. I was like, how is this when I came? So I am from Zimbabwe myself. Sorry. I am from Zimbabwe myself. So when I was preparing to come to the University of Cape Town, I always had this thing, you know, people start doing these things, people divert ways, they lose the faith, they start doing this. And then I came and I realized that there are people like him who are still living. I wanted to do better with my life. I wanted to do better for my life. It had gone beyond trying, you know, to please my parents. It had gone beyond me trying to prove it to myself that I can do better. It was living for God, living for Jesus. It did not just come to me because I could. It became because I saw a man doing it. Kudzi was what he was saying. Every word that he uttered, that's exactly how he was living his life. That's how I can stand here and testify that he has gone to a better place. And yes, he has been there. And some of the things, the way he was brought up, it is because of the seed that each and everyone standing here placed in his heart. You know, I, I still, I always remember his closest friend that I knew, um, that he had was uh, Brandon Batsili. And um, I always wondered, like, could, for those who know could he was gentle, he was calm. You know, I always wondered that when I look at Brother Bats, I'm like, hey, he's all excited, he's loud, and all of that. I'm like, how did you guys become best friends? But as time went on, as I started to, because he seemed the most calm, the more quiet one, compared to the people that were surrounding him, compared to the people that he hang out with, I always wondered, why, what makes these guys talk like this? You know, and then I realized that they had one link, they had one, one common thing, and that thing was Jesus Christ. That thing was his Lord and personal Savior. I don't know anyone who met Kudzi and they didn't see Jesus. I've never met anyone who ever said that, who ever gave that testimony. So I am. I, I do wish that physically was here. But then if I set my side, if I set my flesh aside, I know he's in a better place. He's looking at us all. And I still remember I was saying this thing. Uh, if there's one thing that I've learned from Kunzi, from his whole life, if God tells you to do something, do it then and then. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for the next hour. Don't wait for the next second. As God places that instruction in you, go with that instruction, follow that instruction. That's one of the best lessons that I learned from God. And I'll close with the statement that he always that he said this other time. Um, we we're coming from the uh, Christ, uh, Student Christian Fellowship, and we're just standing outside waiting to go to our to our homes. And he said, "But you, do you know that God is actually interesting? You know ice cream, right?" I was like, "Hey." God is interesting. God, ice cream, like, always the connection. And then he said, you know how ice cream has many flavors? So does God. He has many different flavors. Each and every person that you see, each and every Christian that you see, is a flavor of God. So I'll leave this as the words that is said and I've walked with them and I've read with them. Each and every one standing in this room, here to celebrate him. We are a flavor of God. Yes. And with this thing called Christianity that he was living, it did not end with him. 
He is watching over us. He's watching over us. You know, you know, the scripture says we are surrounded by an innumerable number of witnesses. He is now, he is now one of those witnesses. And I'm sure he's saying, with what I've started, with what I was doing, continue with it. So when you leave this place, make sure the one thing that you're getting out of with this, I should continue this work. I should continue going with this Christianity. So that we see him very soon. You know, I was just meditating about like I'm crying by then. If I really think about it, I'll see it very, 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 very soon. As much as it said that it said that my flesh that is not with us anymore. I am happy that he's in a better place. I am happy that he's resting with the Father. He's, he's, he's so many people that we all wish to see before us. So with that being said, I thank you all for in your ways impacting Kudzi's life, in your own different ways raising Kudzi's life. And I can't go without thanking his parents. You raised a wonderful man. You raised a good brother to us. And not just to us, he was a leader to me as well and to so many people. And with that, I thank you very much. spaces before there was even students, um, we would always call for prayers and as young as we are but we had this 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 hunger to to not to not to not neglect or turn our backs to what we were taught from where we were coming from because we each were coming from different places um, yet whenever we came together we were joined because of God we all had this one thing in common, which was God, and we would share bread together, and we would have birthday celebrations together. We were a family. We were a family. As much as we all were, we were far from home, but we became a family. We became, we became a system that we could, we could count on. Whenever things became difficult, you know, we were able to lean on one another. We were able to come together. I remember whenever Bongo Musa maybe would call randomly and say, guys, let's have a prayer. This is what is instilled in my spirit. Kutsi was always someone who was, who was quick to jump. He would never doubt, he would never hesitate. I mean, we all are students at the end of the day, but somehow Kutsi was the type of man that would always be available when it comes to prayer. He would always avail himself, no matter how far he can be, the venue where we are meeting. But I've never heard Kutsi having an excuse to not come to prayer. 
I'd be lying if I said there's anything negative I've heard Kuzi do. I'd, I'd literally be lying before God because he genuinely lived a life that that challenged my, it challenged me. The humility he had, the character he had. He was always, you know, sometimes we joke and say whenever we are gathered that, you know, Kuzi, you would never even hear him like dragging his feet whenever he walks, you know. You would just see him standing behind you. He was... He was soft-spoken, he was, he was humble, he was humble, and his humility was like an energy that was just oozing out of him, and you couldn't help but be challenged by his character. You couldn't help but use him as a mirror to look at yourself and say, ah, but what am I doing? If there's someone who's able to be like this, what am I doing? You know, you would literally feel as if you are, you are playing in terms of how you are and your character, and I am grateful that even in the past couple of, of days and weeks, God granted us the opportunity to spend some time with him. Even in the hospital, to be able to see him and uh, even in the hospital to be able to to see him and see him smile, see him. Speak from a position of faith as well. I mean, even at the time when he was in hospital, he would still smile and say, "Hello, Lulu, um, I'm, I'm so happy that you are here." He was always smiling. Kuti was always smiling whenever we had celebrations and dinner, and because we'd share bread. And funny enough, that's what Jesus spoke about in the Word of God: breaking bread together and. We would always do that with Kuzi, and sometimes he would he would be like, "No, you guys are always welcome to come and have a celebration at my place." He always welcomed and opened his place for all of us to be able to have celebrations and to break bread and to pray. We would have prayers, share the word of God with him, and even on his birthday celebration, I remember he wasn't expecting anything. He wasn't even expecting for us to have a celebration for him and to surprise him and to celebrate him because he was a man worthy of being celebrated. Kutsi was, was, was a brother, he was a genuine friend, he was someone who would always celebrate others, even in the smallest of things that you do. He would always even say that, no, no, for you, thank you for what you have done. You know, sometimes I'd be the one to make, and he would always come to me with a smile and say, these are so delicious, thank you, no, no, for you. Even in the smallest of tasks, and I would look at him and be like, but this is a small thing that I've done. He would always appreciate others. He never hesitated when it comes to appreciating others. He never hesitated when it comes to honoring, availing himself, availing his resources, giving. He, he literally poured himself out. He didn't just pour from a place of the resources that he had, but he poured himself. He poured himself. He poured out what God had placed in him. We drank from what God had put inside of Kutsi. We, we, he shared the word, he taught us the word. As young as he was, he was a leader. He was a leader, he led me, he led her, he led her as well. He led some of our other brothers and our friends who are not here. He led all of us, he stood with boldness and was able to speak about the word of God as young as he was. Could he challenged us, not just with his character, but with his, 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 his knowledge of the word of God. I think of him and I'm like, you literally represented the character of Christ. You represented the character of Christ. You showed forth love. Whenever there's a contribution financially that had to be made, Kutsi would not hesitate. He would be like, no, I'm putting in the money. And that time he's a student himself. And I celebrate him. I celebrate him today and I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful that I was able to meet a person like Kuti, um, I'm grateful even for almost if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have met Kuti. And in all of the years that I've known him, he remained consistent in his character. He remained consistent, I'd be lying, he remained consistent in his character of being humble and loving and a giving person, ever smiling person, such a quiet person as well. And a man who was full of respect. Kuti was like, 
an elderly person and the, the respect he had, the way he carried himself, he didn't behave like any normal young person. He would find him sometimes whenever we visit the house he was staying at, he would just hear him bursting out in prayer upstairs on his own. And you could see he wasn't doing it for the people. He wasn't doing it to show off in front of people, but it was a lifestyle to him. And I celebrate him, I thank his parents, I honor his parents. I always say that thank you for raising him well. You raised him well and may that console you, that you raised him well. We are a product of his character. We are a product of the seed you planted in him. And we are so grateful to have shared all of the years we had. We are grateful for being able to know Quincy and being able to do life with him. And for all of the things that we've learned from him, we are so grateful and appreciative of, of him and we know that he's in a better place. We know that he's in a better place and we are left with a challenge as we are the young person and as we are young people, um, we are left with a challenge. A challenge to, to do more than what he did. A challenge to take over from where he left off. He was consistent and that's one of the things that challenged me. His consistency in his character, his consistency in ministering, going live on Instagram and preaching about the word of God, his consistency about in our circle as, as a family, as friends, and we will always remember him. We will always remember him, and we are grateful to have done this life thing with him. Thank you so much to his parents, and thank you so much even for the platform as the church. Thank you also for for being a hopeful community as well, for him to be able to grow in Christ. Thank you so much. and. On behalf of his friends, we are grateful to all of you and his parents. Um, thank you so much. Hallelujah. Uh, I'd like to take this time and greet the family. Uh, and all the close friends. Uh, I greet everyone in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, my name is Luto. Uh, my surname is Dimakwe. Uh, I'm a child of God. Amen. Um, so I would like to thank God for this opportunity uh, to come and be gathered here to celebrate our brother Kudzai. Amen. Um, I'm from Student Christian Fellowship. Uh, I would like to take this time just to speak briefly about our brother uh, Kudzai. Um, fortunately for me, I was serving in the executive last year, uh, which was the year which Brother Kuzai was our intercession leader. So he was working uh, with the executive as a sub leader. Amen. So we're so we're really challenged by his consistency and his commitment to the Lord. Amen. Uh, if I was maybe seeing his life from the scriptures, I would check Isaiah chapter 62. The Bible says, uh, because of Zion, I will not keep silent. I will not hold my feet. I will not hold my feet. I will not hold my peace. And then there is a verse that says, I have set watchmen over you, O Jerusalem. Amen. And, then, and by his life and by him, I would say that he was a watchman, hallelujah, over Scrooge and House because he, he spoke briefly about uh, having a, a Christian community around to fellowship and everything. So by that, he was a very committed man of God. To, he was a very committed brother to the Lord. And also, he was a man of fellowship. Hallelujah. Um, so yeah, yeah, and when we were starting our term of service also this year, he also came to me and said, I know, congratulations. Um, and he spoke encouraging words, which you know, the Lord be with you. And we will continue mentioning you on our prayers. I don't want to lie. Uh, that was very encouraging to me. Hallelujah. Um, so yeah, that's just that briefly. Uh, we're really challenged. We thank God. And then one thing about our brother I would like to highlight. It's really painful uh, that he was really, really handsome. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, we thank the Lord. Uh, he had a bright smile. And we thank God for his life. Um, and we say all glory and honor be unto the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My name is Tebi Sokchivasi. I am an alumni of the Student Christian Fellowship that Kuzai was serving in. And I'm just here to say a few words of uh, encouragement, a few words of comfort, and also to testify of the goodness of God through Kuzai's life. Um, firstly, maybe I would like to also again thank the family and the parents of Kuzi for the way he's been brought up. Because there are things which become evident in a person's life. Scripture says that train up a child in the way he should go, and he will not forget it when he's old. And today, everyone who is here is a witness that truly that scripture has been fulfilled. Another thing that I wanted to say is to speak of the spiritual value of service. We are all young people, everyone who has spoken here has tried as best as possible to paint the kind of life that Kuzi lived young as he was. I want to say something and say the human spirit does not age in the same way as the physical body. Somebody who is young in the physical body can be far greater or far older in the spirit. Because the thing that grows the human spirit is not the food that we eat, but the physical food that we eat, but it is the word of God that we eat. So Kuzi is somebody who fed on the word of God such that his spirit was expanded and grew far, far beyond his physical body. That is why we speak of the great works that he did with the very short time that God gave him. There, is, there are two scriptures that I want to share, and then I will sit down. The first scripture is in Mark 8, verse 13. It reads as follows, Mark 8, verse 38. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Kuzai was not ashamed of Jesus Christ. He was not ashamed of the word of God in this sinful and adulterous generation. That is why many can testify that they came to Christ, they were strengthened in the faith through the service that he gave. The second scripture that I want to read is in 1 Thessalonians 4, and I will read only verse 6. Okay, so it's First Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14, not 6. First Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14, and I will go to sit down. It reads as follows. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. These are comforting words because we know that our relationship with Kuzi has not ended. We are certain that we will definitely meet him again. We will see him again. However difficult it may be in this side of eternity, I want everyone to remember him for the values that he held, for the contribution that he made to the body of Christ, and to take that example and emulate it in our own lives. Paul said, imitate me, for I imitate Christ. Today I want to say, imitate Kuzi, because he imitated Christ. God bless you. Thank you.
started. And uh, one thing that I've learned from Kuti is he was never angry. So I, I'm going to carry that on because I get angry a lot. So that has been the lesson that I learned from Kuti and I want to train myself to also be like Kuti. He never got angry. Even if you're late for anything, he'll just say you're late but still laugh. Uh, if it was me, I would say you are late and be frowning at you, but Kuti was never angry. And the other thing that I've learned from Kuti was that he was always on time, all the time. So um, I also learned that punctuality from Kuti. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So Kuzi was the president of Students Fellowship and I was in charge of media. So I interacted a lot with him in terms of just the media for Students Fellowship. And in my interaction with him, I'm reminded of 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 to 7. So I just want to read it from how I perceived Kuzi. Kuzi was patient. Kuzi was kind. Kuzi did not envy. He did not boast. He was not proud. Kuzi did not dishonor others. He was not self-seeking. He was not easily angered. He kept no record of wrongs. Kuzi did not delight in evil, but rejoiced with the truth. Kuzi always protected, always trusted, always hopes, and always perseveres. And as true in fellowship, we had this thing where we said, cheer up, the word works. So I want us to do all of that in memory of Kuzi. So when I say cheer up, please say the word works. When I say the word works, say cheer up, okay? <laughs> so let's say, cheer up. The word works. The word works. Cheer up. Amen. Thank you. Uh, good day to you all. Uh, my name is Tijin Dashu. Um, Kudzi, I knew him from, shocking, from high school. Uh, he was my junior back in high school. We used to go, we used to stay in the same city and later the same high school. And for um, a person who grew up in, in the type of generation that you grew up in, I was shocked the type of character he carried. Because he was a type of person that I could relate to. Something I did not uh, expect in someone in their generation. Because he was very, very much a calm and sophisticated guy. Um, and I'd really, I'd really like to thank the parents for such for, for raising such a such a great guy. He was he was really really heartwarming and cheerful. And I really hope that everyone that he touched will carry on that legacy. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, guys. Afternoon. Afternoon. Um, uh, for those who don't know me, my name is uh, Batsawai Mawundi. And Kuzi's uh, uh, closest friend. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when this tragedy happened, uh, so just to give you a, a, a little bit of a backstory, Kuzi um, uh, was not doing well for the passed uh, for almost a month ago, isn't it? And, uh, but he, he was not doing well before the month, uh, before the time we took him to the hospital. So after things escalated, we then had to take him to the hospital. 
and during his time there, uh, we were expecting a different outcome. We were expecting something totally different to what happened. So, uh, you know, to be honest, I never thought uh, there would be, I'll be doing such a thing. But I know uh, deep down uh, in my friend's heart that uh, he wanted me to do this. Okay. 2018, I came, um, we came to UCT as a uh, first year uh, doing the uh, degree of Bachelor of Science in Property Studies. And uh, we, uh, I myself, uh, uh, where I went to high school, none of, none of the people I went to high school with came to UCT. So even from when I was accepted for UCT and, and, and I got my uh, I knew what I was doing, I knew that I was going to be alone. Everything yet, I was gonna start over. And I was okay with that because I've always been, a, it didn't start like this, it didn't start that way, but I've always been a strong person. Yeah. But, uh, but so I've always been a strong person. So I came and I was confident enough to meet many friends and all that and, and we did everything. But then, uh, of course, you would, the first thing you would do is to look for people from your uh, country. So Kuzil was Zimbabwean and there were other Zimbabweans there. And uh, me also being Zimbabwean, uh, the, the first thing is to check who you're with, isn't it? So I, most of the Zimbab Zimbabweans we found out uh, so there's construction property, so both of them would, would do the orientation together. So we found that most of all the Zimbabweans were on the construction side, and there was only just two Zimbabweans on the property side, which is Kuzi and I, and the rest of the people were uh, from other countries. So we, we, did, uh, we kind of figured, uh, I think since we kind of relate, let's just stick together, you know? <laughs> we just, let's just stick together. Then uh, it was just like that, and uh, we didn't expect to be very close. Just like uh, he's Zimbabwean, I'm Zimbabwean, we have common ground. Let's go, in the same. So we went like that for months, started doing things together, and things, and then things kept moving that way. Oh, well, now in my life, uh, there was one thing that I always wanted, but I never could get. That was a relationship with God, something deep, like deep connection with God. So there came a time during that year, 2018. I searched for that. I searched for that greatly. Uh, long story short, I then met Omumusa. When I met Omumusa, I saw something different in him. Then I followed him. As he, as, uh, then uh, as the year went, I was still with Kuzi. I was still with Kuzi. Then there's a, during the time when Omumusa was mentoring me and teaching me, he told me one thing. And I, I would always, uh, after I, I could do, I, after I, I learned and I was learning about this, I said, I have a friend who can actually benefit from this. And then, I have a friend who can benefit from this and I want him to be a part of this. How does he contribute in, in the kingdom? How does, what, what, how, what kind of participation does he have in it? You understand? Uh, then he, he would just say, I don't know why uh, time comes and all that, and, and he would say all those things. But I, well, I'm always inquisitive. So I asked him every time, every time. I always asked him. Then there came a time. Uh, so because we came, uh, uh, differently, I stayed somewhere else, but uh, I stayed sort of in a flat somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's an old-fashioned kind of thing. When I went to his house, I was like, "How did you find this place?" And then, and uh, you're know, staying in students, and the place was just uh, I felt, it felt like a bargain for me. And then, so I said, uh, "You know, next year I'm coming to that side." So this was just me. And then, so when I, when it came next year, when I was supposed to move now, Bomusa said something I will never forget. Bomusa said, "God made it possible." for you to move there for a reason. It's not just you trying to go there. I was like, okay, the, he, can, he says things like this, so maybe, you know, I'll just take it and, and, and let's go. Said. But then he says, you see Kuzi, he, this is a great man. I was like, this Kuzi, I'm trying to, <laughs> yeah, this Kuzi is a great man. I was like, okay, okay, this is what I wanted, but now you're telling me something much better than I thought. Just stay close to him and you see. I was like, okay, I've always known that if uh, when you're dealing with uh, mentors, 
whatever they say, if they're telling you something, it, you have to, whether you have an opinion or not, what you have to do is to follow it. Because the, the very fact that you're calling them mentor, it means they know more than you. So that it doesn't matter what I think, let me do what he said I should do. From then, I walked with him. At first, he was a little bit resistant, he was no cousin. Because he's a very strong person. Isn't and if he has something he believes in, he stands on it. It doesn't matter what you think, he stands on it. So, the way he thought is like, ah, no, you are too religious for me, you understand? <laughs> so, so I said, I know, I, I'm still sticking to what my Musa said. And I talked to him, I talked to him, and I would ask him questions about the scriptures, and he'd be like, oh, then we had some arguments and some, like, I, I would mention some, some crazy thing from the Bible, like, I know, yeah, you have to show me the verse. Uh, if you don't show me the verse, you know, those kind of things. That's a back and forth. Then, as the year went, we we're now together now. We we'll now see what other Christians are doing, like they should have been doing this way. The Bible was like this and this and that. Then I remember one day we were coming from the kitchen and we were talking and we stood uh, in the passage. You were supposed to go to this room and I was supposed to go to mine, but we didn't. And we were talking. As we were talking, immediately I saw something. As uh, we were talking, I saw a high rise building, like sort of a like building, 50, 50 something stories, but it was half built. It was almost getting completed, it was being completed. A very beautiful building, and I saw that. And the, and the image then vanished. I was talking to him. I was like, "Why did I see this?" Then I then I, what I heard was, "This is the building that represents who you're building with." I was like, "Okay, okay, this is uh, something new." You understand? Because usually, when Musa Khan would tell me these things, and I say, and I would pass on the message. So if it, when it came to me, it was a little bit different. You understand? So I said, I just believed it as it was. Then. Uh, it was now 2018, 2019, 2019, 2020 now. Uh, we, we'd moved so, so much, we're now close. You know, we did everything together. But that was just, uh, we shared the world together, we go to shop, we just hang out together and we would plan things together. But not just the two of us, uh, with our other two friends. But because of time, I want to talk about everything because we did a lot. <laughs> so uh, uh, the reason is because. Uh, Although it was just five, four years with us, it felt like we were, we were living for 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's how much we, we did. We were just busy all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I thank God we made memories. It's just that uh, uh, if we would compare those memories in the video, we would be here the whole day. Mm -hmm. So can I just give you the select uh, few. Then uh, COVID happened, and we panicked, all of us, and everyone panicked. But Kuzen and I, we talked about it, we saw it from the perspective of the world. And we were okay, the two of us. And we just built each other like that. Then it was okay, and we had a housemate. Since we, are, we live uh, about nine of us at the house, one of the people with the house had to go home. Then it was just uh, eight of us. So Kuzen and I were okay. The housemates, we didn't even wonder if they were okay or not. <laughs> we were okay. And we grew like that in the world. We were strengthened by the world on the inside of us. Then, as we were discussing and making jokes in the kitchen, Kuzi just comes out of nowhere and says, guys, I think we should have a day where we just have a prayer session, or a moment where we gather and have a prayer. I just stood back, I just, <laughs> two steps back, I was like, this is the person that Musa said I should be close to. But he was more bolder than me to introduce this thing. Without, uh, by then I had been a Christian for three years. A devout Christian, not just a Christian, but a devout Christian for three years. And I was uh, staying close to him and uh, would teach, I would teach him the word and, and bring it to where he thought I was religious. Well, I, I said already, he understood that part, isn't it? And I would bring him to where he, uh, he then uh, was. And I said, like, with all that I've done, he was more, he was bolder than I to do this. But then I was like, you know what, let's just do this, this is a good idea, let's go in. Then we started, the first day we did, everyone was just like, no one knew what, what this was. <laughs> Only because he just came with his Bible, he opened, everyone just sat down, and he started sharing from nowhere, he just started going and going, and everyone was just quiet, they didn't know how to respond. And I just said, uh, then says, now you can share, I share, you share, to the people. Everyone just kept quiet. I was like, no, let me, this is my guy, let, let me also <laughs> I started sharing. So now every fellowship was just me. After he shares, everyone looks at me now. So then I share. So it's like us contributing. 
But then I was, I was wondering, like, God, well, how come it's always like this? Then God said, this person that you see, him saying, let's have a prayer session like this and do things, uh, do things like this, it was not a mistake. There's something he started that he should be the leader of. Then I told him that uh, this is what the Lord said. And all these things were happening when Bomusa was in Pretoria. So I couldn't confirm any of this. So I just said things as I was told. And I would say things and the image and explain that we are here fellowshipping and these things are happening, but there's, a, we, there's something happening amongst us. You know there's something happening amongst us. So they just took my word for it. I don't know how they took it. I just said these things. <laughs> then, uh, not only did God come to confirm the things we were saying, many things happened. From then, everyone, every single person we had in the house became a devout Christian. I think uh, within the next three months, or next four months, they were devout Christians. You know, there's a scripture which, which uh, the Apostle Peter says, uh, uh, be ready to defend, defend the hope in you. By the time three months or four months ago I was gone, every single person in the house was able to defend the hope in them. You understand? And I looked back and said, God, what you said, I said, this person shall be the leader of this thing we call through this fellowship. I was like, this is, a, this is a huge thing. And I was saying, this is the same person who stood his ground in the, in the place where he was, and he was okay, not coming. But you had to say through Bomo Musa, and then through me. From then onwards, many things happened. Many people who were in deep depression came back to God. Many people who never knew God, knew God. And many people who were not as devout Christians, who were just looking for an answer, got an answer. And I, and I saw and said, this is the grace that we were given. But this all came through Kutsi. Uh, from, from that time, during the course of the three years and uh, uh, I think about uh, two and a half years, they, we did so much. We went live every single Thursday and Sunday. It didn't matter who joined, who didn't join. And we, we were willing, Kutsi and I says, if there's anything we are willing to do, even till our grave, is this. It doesn't matter who comes against us. It doesn't matter who tries what. It doesn't matter what they or what anyone ever said. If there's anything we're going to stand for, is the word of God. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, the problem with Christians is Christians are willing to go uh, for, uh, far for God until a certain point, mm -hmm. then they stop. Mm -hmm. But we talked and agreed and said this: when it comes to God, there's no uh, distance we won't go. There's no everywhere that needs to be gone for God, we will do it. Any, any that needs to be done for God, we will do it. And all my life, I've never had a person like Kuzi, who I was so devoted to, that we had even our visions, our dreams, and we said, we're going to go this far, we're going to do this. And I knew all the time we were always together. Always together. We were always together, Kuzi. We preached together. I'm sure if you see our page, you see that this is just like the two of us. Right? <laughs> so we we'll share the message together. Not just the, not, not, not just the message, we'll talk about business. We'll talk about our companies, our plans. Uh, with uh, Bongusa and Janky, we were always four from the, when we began uh, our, our degree. And we always had, we always did so many things. We went hiking, we did all these things. And there's something one of my friends said, and this thing brought me to tears. It says, everything we have achieved to this day, and everything that I'm going to achieve was going to be impossible without this contribution. Mm -hmm. Everything that we are and where we are here, there was, it was going to be impossible without this contribution. Mm -hmm. And I remember many times in my life when I felt like I was stuck and this is the end of me. Mm -hmm. Every time I talk to Kuzi, the last thing he would say is, don't worry. We'll get through this. And it's not just someone who just spoke things like, ah, you know, he's here, I might have to say something nice and get the guy's spirits up and have him, have him, have him to go. He meant, you could see that he stood on the, on the, on the word when he says, 
Jonathan, uh, Jonathan, it's going to be great. We can get through this. You can ask uh, even our friends, who are always four, isn't it? Him being the fourth one, isn't it? We had groups and all this. Now, when I got the news, I was wondering, uh, when you were sick and uh, these things were happening to him, I was wondering, like, dear Lord, if this goes the, the way that I'm not expecting, that, that I do not want, how am I going to carry on without him? Because everything we planned involved him. Concerning the gospel, we're willing to climb even Mount Everest with the word of God. We're willing to go very far. And every time we faced opposition, problems, uh, resistance, any issue we faced, I knew that we were just, we were the, we were the two of us, we were, a, we were a partnership, we were a pair, we could take it together. Never in my life have I thought that there's going to be a time where I have to learn to take it on my own. This, this is the last thing I ever thought uh, I was going to do. But I know, uh, I'm also now quoting my friend, uh, Bumus. He said, uh, uh, if the time, if they, it comes the time of my departure, or the time I shall finish my work, uh, the position I pray to God that I will be in is the position that Kuzi was in when he left the earth. And I looked back and said, uh, and I also said something. I said, Kuzi, even the last day, when he was sick, when he wasn't feeling well, we went live and shared the word. It was his turn. He was feeling like giving up. I talked to him, remember, Kuzi, we are strong, we can do this. We went live together. He was strengthened in that moment and he shared something. Even when he was sick, he was still working for God. I would call him in the hospital and she would have Bible sessions whilst he was in the hospital, in the bed, and said, a genuine and normal person would be like, I know I, 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 will, I will see God after I'm done, after I come back. But Kuzi and I were sharing, we were planning whilst he was in the hospital. We we're still planning for the future. I would suggest things that we will still plan for the future. And uh, the last day I talked to him, we, shared, we did a Bible session. And he told that he always prays, he always talks to God, he always looks back on the way. Sometimes uh, you'd uh, uh, play the videos of Prophet and actually hear the message of God and hear and learn. And even in his last days, last, last, last days, he was still praying to God, he was still believing in God. He was still, uh, his first line of response was to God, to communicate and relate with God. And uh, so when I got the news and I saw everyone being concerned, I then I looked around and I saw that the actual the closest person here is me. And I said, this has never happened in my life. But uh, me standing here, being able to speak like this and do all this, I know it's the grace of God. And I know too deep deep down in my heart, I know exactly who he is. I know that he's ex he has been saved and he has escaped the pressures of this world and is in a better place. And everything that he had to do, he did it with all his heart and completed it. And, uh, and I thank you guys for uh, coming. I thank you for showing your support. I thank you for showing this love to my friend to all come here and honor him. And uh, uh, without wasting any time, I would like to also thank uh, the parents uh, for raising him, for bringing him to Cape Town, and uh, uh, for giving this gift, which is cozy, to everyone. Mm -hmm. Because he touched our lives and changed the, the things about us. And we thank him. And, uh, and I would like to uh, introduce uh, uh, his father, um, uh, Mr. Zachira. Uh, to share uh, and to give uh, to share his, his remarks and yes. thank you. Thank you, Martin. 
I greet you all in the name of Jesus. I'm Kuzai's father, and with me is Ruth, Kuzai's mother, and Alan, Kuzai's young brother. When we brought Kuzai to Cape Town, it was in 2018, and myself and the mother, we came with him. And we were able to meet Janet, the landlady, where Kuzai was staying. And we went back. In Zimbabwe, Kuzai had a Bible, which I gave him. Um, and he used it in primary and high school. And we bought him another one just before he came to university. And that's the one that you always see him using, the brown, the one with the brown cover. So when we got the news that he was not well, it was on the 7th of May when he collapsed. And Basrai sent a message to us on the 8th. We were actually in the middle of a service. And we then made arrangements. And his mother came down to Cape Town on the 11th of May. Alan's passport had expired, so we needed to quickly apply for an emergency passport. And I then followed with Alan on the 13th of May. We are very grateful to Janet who allowed us to use his room whilst he was in hospital. And when we went to the hospital, we realized that Kuzai was now partially blind. He could not see us, but he could tell that this is daddy, this is mom, this is Alan. He could just tell from our voices. We had a meeting with the doctor, and the doctor confirmed that Kuzai actually had a condition which is called aplastic anemia. It was actually a severe condition of aplastic anemia. But the doctors assured us that the team had worked out a plan for him to have a bone marrow stem transplant. And his young brother was going to be the donor. And we were praying every day, hoping for the best. But as they were preparing his body for the stem transplant, Unfortunately, he picked an infection which took the team a long time to identify what the infection was and identify the appropriate antibiotic. And unfortunately, it is this infection that led to him passing on before the stem transplant. And when we were told that this, is, this was the case, it was very difficult for us because every day we would visit him in hospital, two to three, and we all managed to speak. And he would always say, goodbye, we'll meet again tomorrow. He was always smiling, we would ask him, how are you feeling today? Throughout, he would say, today I'm feeling better. Today I'm feeling better. But as the days went by, at times we could tell that he was really in pain. And even for us to sleep, it was difficult. But as we were praying, the word then came to say, but when it was finished on the cross, Jesus declared that it was finished. So I said to the family, we don't have to worry until Jesus says it is finished. And 
from there we managed to sleep peacefully and I always say to the family, as long as there is no message from the hospital, it means Kudzai is still fighting. When we were at home as a family, we always shared a daily family devotions, which we would put on our group. Without fail, Kudzai would always acknowledge and say a few words about it. And as I stand here, the last message from Kudzai was on the 7th of May. When we came down and then realized that he was now partially blind, that's when we realized that he could not type messages on the phone. All he could do was to find means and ways to answer the phone, but for some days, that helped us because the mother would always phone around 9 a.m. and he would answer and then we'll see him 2 to 3 and then around 8 we'll phone again and he would answer. But towards the last days he could no longer answer even the call. So on the 7th of May he could not answer to our messages and I think about three days before he was promoted to glory, he could also not answer the calls. But on the 1st of June, we actually had an opportunity to talk to him. And to all the three of us, he said, goodbye, Dad, we'll meet tomorrow. Goodbye, Mom, we'll meet tomorrow. Goodbye, Alan, we'll meet tomorrow. 1 a.m. on the 2nd of June, we were called that he had been promoted to glory. I would like to thank you for supporting Kudzai. We were always worried whether he was lonely, but from the testimonies that we have heard here, Kudzai had friends. And we also say to him, you don't necessarily have to stick to the church that you grew up in. What matters is Christ. What we just want to know is that you are following Christ. And I'm so excited to know that he had brothers and sisters who are strong in Christ. And we are very grateful for all the support that you gave Kudzai, the encouragement that you gave him. And just to conclude, remember the Apostle Peter, when Jesus said, you, you know that time when everybody deserted Jesus, and Jesus turned to his disciples and said, are you also going to go away? And Peter said, Lord, we know no one to go to, because you have the words of eternal life. So even though Kudzai is no longer with us physically, we are very excited that we have got a lot of young people who have the zeal for Christ. Do not go away. Remain in Christ. Remain inviting more to Christ. And I know one day, on his day of coming back, we will see him coming through the clouds. Thank you so much. God bless. Let's keep the word in us and let's keep inviting more to come to Jesus because in Jesus, that's where we only have life. Thank, Thank you.
So let us be relevant and let us leave Christ and not our own celebrity on earth for people to remember. But let us leave Christ um, that we lived out when, when we passed. You know, so I was encouraged about the legacy that he left the youngsters. Uh, that is something big for me. And our brother said he didn't know that you must do it on his own. He saw that the two of them were going to do it, you know, when Christ comes. But there's always a reason. So now you have to leave, you have to take over where, where you know, where his partner left. And you have to run with the vision that the two of them have all the time. So now he has to run with that. And I'm encouraged to see that the youngsters um, that he left specifically the legacy of Christ for the youngsters. And I want to encourage you, no matter what you are facing in this world, make good decisions and always let what he what Kucha left behind um, run with that, run with the vision that he left behind. I know there's ups and downs and there's temptations and there's peer pressure and all that, but I am I'm really honored today to see the youngsters testifying um, what he had left for them behind. Um, we're going to have our brother Melvin that's going to bring the word for us. Uh, our pastor is not here today, so he is going to bring the word for us. So we welcome brother Melvin um, to bring us a, a word for us of encouragement. And then after that, we will we will end our service. Thank you, Brother Melvin.